your dad was almost an inseparable ally of the North. So how come today you are championing the Igbo cause? It seems you've detoured the Igbo cause. No, it's not that I'm championing the Igbo cause. If anything, um, probably, you know, people would say that I'm championing um, the cause of those that I believe have been marginalized in this country over the years. Um, not just the Igbo, but the Igbo case is particularly bad in my own view, in my humble opinion. Um, and I believe it's important that we empathize uh, with those that have been oppressed and treated in a very, very unjust manner. Um, that's the first thing, especially if you believe you're the stronger one. In other words, you've been privileged as a people or as, a, as an ethnic nationality or pride, um, tribe, mm -hmm. and others are suffering. I think you should, we should be able to empathize. So I've empathized with the Igbos and what they've, what they've been through over the years. But I've also spoken up for, for, for Southerners in this country, probably more than anybody else when it, when it comes to the national level. And I've also spoken up for people of my faith, the Christian faith, who I believe have suffered immeasurably. Uh, over the last few years in this country. Um, I've also spoken up for the northern minorities, uh, the Christians of the north and the Muslim minority tribes in the north. And today I'm also speaking up as a Sadao King Shinkafi for the oppressed people of the core north itself. So what I've found is that over a period of time, my trajectory has been that I, I, I've, I've got deep with certain groups, spoken up for them, and this thing has spread and spread and spread more now. So now I've got to a point that it really doesn't matter to me where you're from, what your faith is. If you're being killed or if you're being massacred, for example, you're a Shia Muslim, or even if you're somebody that lives in San Farah State, one of the 300 to 500 people that have been killed a day um, whilst Governor Yari was in power, um, I'll speak up for you and I'll stand for you. And I believe that's what leadership is all about. You have to empathize with those under with those that have been oppressed. I identify with the struggles of the people of the Southwest. I'm from there. Um, and I identify with those struggles and the agitation for a fairer deal, the agitation for restructuring, and the agitation for, for fairness and equity at the highest level of government. I also sympathize with people in the Niger Delta area. They've suffered, they've been deprived, and that's why I work so hard for President Jonathan against all odds and against all advice from those from other parts of the country. The people of the Middle Belt, in my view, have suffered as much as the Igbo, probably more, over a longer period of time. And I speak for them. I've visited the, 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 the places that have been, that, that have been terrorized and their people have been slaughtered. I've visited the families. They visit me. And I, I live in the North, so I've seen all that with my own eyes, and I'm horrified and mortified by it. And now, of course, I, I, I am quite close to many in the core North itself, and I'm proud to be close to them. And I, I believe that it's important that those that are suffering, they also need representation. So this is my trajectory, and this is my belief. And um, But let me also say this, my brother, very quickly. I believe in the right of self-determination. And I believe the only way you can stop people from saying, for example, they want to leave the Federation, if you don't want them to leave, is to treat them with love and with equity and with decency. Certainly not by killing them, massacring them, and hurting them, and insulting them. And that's why I believe the case of the evil particularly is one that needs to be addressed. And the case of the people of Middle Belt, um, they have suffered immeasurably, both groups, and we need to do a lot more for them uh, as a people. And we need to speak for them, stand for them, and fight for them. And I still so, this is the Yoruba man. So, yeah. You, yeah you're, what's you're your view, Afra? I want what? Yeah. your what, opinion. Yeah. On, on Biafra. Biafra. Yes, please. Let me let me let me let me let me let me tell you my my honest view. First of all, I have nothing but respect for the leader of IPOL. I met him when we were in prison together, and um, I I I got to know him very well. And uh, I don't agree with everything he says, particularly when he speaks about the people of the Southwest and perhaps other tribes and the way that he used to speak about them. Um, but I have immense respect for, to him because he has courage. And that is a virtue in my, in, in, in my language. I will respect any man that has courage. I also believe that um, his people have suffered probably more than any other. I mean, look, the, the people of the Southeast were subjected to genocide. There's no question about it. Three million people, civilians, killed during the Civil War. That hasn't happened to anybody else. And I don't want to go too much into all that because it's very upsetting and gets me very emotional. But I believe strongly that we as a people and as a nation owe the people of the Southeast an apology for what we did to them or to their civilian population during the Civil War. That is very important in my view, if you want national reconciliation. I also believe that you need to be able to 
understand and accept that those that have been hurt in the past have a reason and have a right to express their pain when they're faced with injury and hardship and persecution. And that's what the IPO people are doing. Now, I do not believe that they are terrorists. This government has labeled them as terrorists. So if I did, I would have nothing to do with them. I'm not a member of IPO, but I believe that they have the right to self-determine. Now, when it comes to the issue of Biafra, I said it earlier, or Dudua, or Dudua Republic, or anything else, then it's no good saying, well, I'm against Biafra, because it's not for you to determine what will happen to other people. It's for them to determine what they want to do. But if you don't want a Biafra, what you need to do is reach out in love and administer justice and equity and make them feel part and parcel of this country, draw them close and treat them with humanity. And humanity. It's like a woman that is living in your house, it's your wife, for example, not yours, but let's say somebody else's, and keep saying, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm packing, I'm packing. Sometimes they even pack their things and go for a while. But deep down, you know that the only way to stop her from going it's not to continuously beat her and could you treat her like, 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 like she's nothing, but you have to reach out in love, forgive her and draw her close. And that's what a strong man would do. And that a strong nation ought to be able to take care of those that have been marginalized and treated like animals over the years. That is why this agitation is strong because successive federal governments and not just this one, I might add, other ones that came before it have refused to acknowledge what these people of the Southeast have suffered in the past. They, everything was taken from them after the Civil War. Yet they managed to rise up again. It's not just them. I say again, the Middle Belters suffered as much in the hands of those that came and conquered them many, many years ago and established a system over them. They have also suffered. And uh, of course, we in the Southwest, only we know how much we have suffered over the years. When you look at what happened to Aulo, you look at what happened to, to Abiola, you look at what happened to Obasanjo, uh, when he was sent to jail unjustly. You look at what happened to Bola. So many people. So we've all had a little bit of suffering and we all need a little bit of love. We need to understand. We need empathy. And we need to empathize with one another. And I believe that any government that wants to keep Nigeria together and stop the agitation of Biafra, stop the agitation for Dudua Republic and so on and so forth, first has to show empathy and sympathy for the oppressed, has to stop oppressing people, and finally and most importantly has to accept that restructuring this country Evolving power from the center is the only way forward if you want to keep Nigeria together in, in, into, the, um, into the future. If you don't do that, then definitely, eventually, people will exercise that right, whether you like it or not. And I, I certainly hope it doesn't come to that, because I'm a man of peace, and I don't believe in violence. Uh, I don't believe in, in, in conflict. I believe in peace, persuasion, and building bridges. And that's what we need to do. Okay, let me give you a double-barreled question. A lot well, of people... Oh, especially the young ones are agitating for the Odua Republic. Uh, mm. You are especially the best of the governor of for your state who happens to be a PDP governor. Mm. Uh, you said I should one. say hello to you, by the way. I'm right, here, I'm right here with him. He's not too far from me. He said I should say a big uh, hello to you. Yes. <laughs> He's a wonderful, great guy. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. Sorry, you were saying. So, yes, yeah, so the Odudua Republic, the Biafra, and any such. Mm. Uh, well, let's say anticipated nations. Mm. Okay? Do you think they are visible? Is it a visible? There's no. There's no Do you think no. they yeah. break away from Iraq today without fighting a war? Okay, first of all, they are feasible because, for example, the Southwest is, would, would be, if Odudua Republic was formed, it would be larger than any other country, than any country in Western Europe, um, with the exception of possibly France. Certainly in terms of population, a larger population in the Southwestern part of Nigeria than any country in Europe. That's number one. And in terms of land mass, it's a huge area. And that goes, it's more or less the same for a number of other uh, parts of, of Nigeria. Um, so it's certainly feasible. The question is, is it desirable? Um, I believe strongly that um, it is desirable if that's what the people want. It's not for me to judge anybody. And I think for years we've, been, we've, been, we've, we've all been saying, well, if this is settled. You cannot cross that line. It's settled law that Nigeria must be won. Well, those of us that have been saying that or those that have said that are living in cuckoo land because change is the only thing that is inevitable. Now, I'm saying if you don't want that, and I... I, as a first option, do not want that myself. 
I would much rather we fix Nigeria, if it's fixable. Restructure it and fix it. If you can't restructure it, mm -hmm. if you can't fix it, if you insist on the philosophy that some must be slaves and some must be masters, or the philosophy that some are horse riders mm -hmm. and some are horses, if you, if you insist on that philosophy, that some are masters and servants, definitely, or, or some are born to rule and others are born to serve, definitely, you are going to have a breakup of this country. That is given. And it may be a conflict which ends in a lot of violence and bloodshed. Nobody mm -hmm. wants that. So in order to avoid that, what you have to do, treat people as equals, be sensible in how you manage the affairs of others, show empathy to what people have been through, and try and fix the problem and devolve power from the center. That is the way forward. And um, so if, if you ask if they're feasible, they certainly are feasible. The Afro is feasible. If you ask whether it can be done without a conflict, which is, I think, is what you now asked me, I think that it would be very difficult to achieve these objectives without a conflict. And that is precisely why I would rather we fix Nigeria. However, let me tell you this. It doesn't matter what I think or what I feel. Those behind me in the younger generation in the Southwest, and you know, Bobby D, you know this as well as I do. They're not waiting for people like us to give the go-ahead. They are telling people like us that you are living in the past, that you believe in this entity. We don't believe. And we are constantly trying to tell them that things can change if we have restructuring and if we change things and we get the right leadership in the country and you devolve power. We can change it. We can fix it. Same in the Southeast, same in other parts. The younger generation are fed up with leaders like us that have consistently said there must be peace. They are saying, peace at what price? That they're not prepared to be slaves. They're not prepared to continue in this mess. And we have to listen to that. And we have to try to fix the problem mm -hmm. before they decide to do something terrible, which is just to begin to take their, their destiny in their own hands and, and begin an armed struggle. And God forbid that should ever happen in our country. We don't want that. We, never, we pray that never happens. And by God's grace, it will not happen. So, what is happening to Amotekun? Because there was so much unfair at the beginning and suddenly it fizzled out. Now, I think the last time I heard anything was Arakuni, Akere Dolu wearing their uniform and all that. So, <laughs> red, 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 red. So, I'm not well, let me, yeah, yeah. Let me, let, let me, yes. <laughs> Well, let me say this. Um, first of all, I'm very proud of um, our governors in the Southwest, across party lines, for coming up with the idea of you know, a security outfit which is designed to protect the people. The Southwest literally has been, um, has been inundated and filled with people from outside the, this part of the country, mainly foreign, foreigners, by the way, I should add that. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, foreign, foreign Fulani people have flooded our forests. And you know they were killing our people kidnapping and indulging all sorts of crime. And for some reason or other, in my view, this government seemed um, to, to not be able to control the situation at best, and at worst, uh, seemed to, to, to be indifferent to the plight of our people. So the governors did the right thing, something many of them never thought, uh, many of us never thought they would do. And that is why I, 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 I say I'm impressed with people like uh, Makinde, uh, people like um, uh, all the others, every single one of them. Um, um, you know, they, they, they have stood up, they rose to the occasion, uh, Kylie fired me and all, and said, "Look, enough is enough." And they set up this outfit. I had had a discussion with uh, Are um, uh, Gani Adams, the Are Onakakamfu, the, the our generalissimo in Yoruba land, uh, a few uh, months ago, and I told him that it is his responsibility. Mm -hmm. I was told so that to ensure that you know the people of the Southwest are defended in the event of any conflict, mm -hmm. and that I sincerely hope that he's working on that. And he assured me that he's working together with leaders in the Southwest to ensure that it never came to that and to deter any form of aggression. And I accepted that, and I believe that. And, 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 and the fulfillment of that hard work was to persuade the governors to do what they've done. And they've done it, and they will continue to do it. Any attempt by uh, the federal government to control or merge this group with the Nigerian police will not work. First, it's unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the purpose is to defend the people of the Southwest and all those that are living within the Southwest who are non-Anago people. Um, that's the purpose, and that's a laudable thing. Because the situation that we're in today is a very, very uh, uh, bad one. It's unsustainable. It's untenable. And we, we just have to do something to save the lives and properties and protect our people. Uh, I believe it's also part of what a true federation uh, offers. Uh, that the local people, the local people in their locality 
can protect their people. And that's mm-hmm. what they're doing. And it's, it's alive and well. I was, I was happy with what um, Akiri Dolu did the other day with the uniform and all the rest of it, because it, it sent a signal to the whole country that this is an integral part of, Euro, of um, Anago uh, Udua culture now, and it's not going anywhere. And I'm very proud of that. And I believe that it's something that um, ought to continue, ought to be sustained.